What's up guys, Ankle Spangin here, and today we are playing as Lucian AD Carry in a uh, in a ranked solo queue game on my uh, on my other diamond account. As you guys may know, I have two diamond accounts, one my main, one this account. Um, I usually put on this account when I record because it's not my main, and <laughs> when I'm playing on my main account, I like to, uh, you know, try my very hardest, which sadly I just can't do on my, or when I'm recording, but I also would like to bring you guys the uh, the diamond level gameplay and commentary because I think a lot of you guys would en or enjoy it and have fun seeing it um having <laughs> I think you guys also enjoy knowing that uh you know diamond players aren't always always amazing I truly don't know how to do it properly um I know taking the krugs if the jungler starts on the other side is actually a very big experience boost well okay so since we have Soraka, um, we're just going to take the Krugs, and if we do this properly, we can actually get quite the, um, quite the experience lead. Okay, so we kill the small one first, and then, okay, whatever, we'll try. We'll try this. So I guess, I guess I'll auto attack here, auto Q, back up, auto, auto. All right, have her tank some of it. Have me tank some of it. Have, no, have her have her tank some of it. Get another Q off in here. All right, all right. This is looking looking decent, maybe. All right, there we go. Whoa! Holy shit! Already just about level two. We're gonna come into this lane. Soraka is gonna get hooked immediately. But hello, here I am, level two. The only problem with doing that is now uh, clearly I am lower on HP. So, when they combine poke me like that, um, it's going to be rough, but what the hell? What the hell is happening? Okay. Okay. So, I guess they were getting nervous that uh, they were roaming towards the Shaco in the jungle. So, let's go ahead. Ooh, I'm going to be getting hooked here, and, oh, I might have to... Maybe... No, I'm not going to have to flash. So, a rough fight right there. Looking like he's trying to get near me. There's the heal. I was waiting for her to hit level 2 so I can get that health. Um, and this is pretty much exactly why I don't like to do the Krugs. Because, I mean, it gives somewhat of an advantage. And hopefully we can still make use of it. But, um, sadly, if, if I didn't, or if I uh, had gone a bit less ham at the beginning, I think it would have been more worth. But since we do have Soraka, at least, I do have immense amounts of sustain. And let's go ahead and just get that, make sure we get it. Drop our drop another point on our Q. And keep we'll just keep trying to get the CS where we can right now. I have missed um, a decent hunk, but not actually not actually too much. And with the Soraka sustain, actually, I'm surprised that we were able to get that much HP back already. So maybe this can end up paying off. Maybe, hopefully. Obviously I don't want to be up too close, because if Thresh does end up gain a pretty beast hook off on me that can be problematic um, seeing as though I don't have my heal anymore so let's go ahead and just keep up the auto attack in here I do apologize first game of the day uh, I actually just got back from a dentist appointment so my teeth feel very funny but you know cleanliness and hygiene is good that's gonna be a bad cue but we still are in this just fine alright move out of this he's gonna go ahead let's uh oh uh-oh. All right, this is going to be some good damage off on him, but first blood going to be going down right there. Shaco coming in real fast, and it's looking like uh, maybe? Maybe? Okay, he just misclicked. So, well, that Shaco gank is over. He straight up misclicked uh, his two whatever shiv, his shiv, his E, and, well, he totally missed. So let's go ahead and just get both of those minions. Get that one, and I shouldn't be too far behind Corky and CS at this point. Uh, actually, I am very far behind Corky, but okay. Jarvin's trying to gank me. So let's see. Soraka's back. Does Should I stay? Yeah, I think I should stay. I think I should stay, because Soraka is coming back, so I just need to stay here, CS, and get experience. Because I should be totally fine with her back in lane now. She didn't get any potions, not a single one. Um, she just upgraded her enhanced, you know, fairy charm, but, uh, I think we'll be good. So let's see, only, 
Four CS down on Corky. Not bad. Looks like he just Valkyrie to go home, so we should push this ASAP. Because making them miss as much CS as possible is ideal. I sh wanted to use my Q. Oh, fuck. I wanted to use my Q on the ranged minions right there. But I already had missed my opportunity. Because if I used it, um, or if I didn't use it on that melee one, I think I would have missed it. I could have used my W, but better safe than sorry. I'm just going to push this wave out as well. Um, because if I can give Corky any chance to miss minions by just getting him under his tower, that will be good for us. So let's just make sure we get the siege and get that one. And 150 till BF. Please. Because if we actually stay for just a tiny bit longer until I get my BF sword, that'll be pretty good for us, seeing as though Corky only has a pickaxe and boots. So if I actually stay just you know safely for like one or two more waves. Pretty much actually just one wave, assuming I get all the CS, and Thresh is going back right now, so this is actually a very safe call, and never mind, he's not going back, he interrupted it. So, let's go ahead and just get both of these. And as you guys can see, my focus right now, 100% on CS, and I am so not concerned with trying to poke Corky, or anything like that, it's looking like they're pretty concerned with poking me, but it's really not going to do anything, just dash out of the hook. Even though there were minions in front of me, I'm not too worried. Um, I am about level 6, so I may I may even find it beneficial for me to stay until I'm 6 at this point. Because I'm really not in danger of dying at all. The only reason I have to go back is the fact that I have enough money for BF Sword. And, whoop. Okay, so he tried to snake eyes over there. But the reason I'm saying I don't have any reason to go back at the moment is because I have both my summoners. The only thing I'm lacking is mana and um, the use of my gold. But that is not that bad. If I can actually just stay here until I'm 6 at this point, and then get a calling off on the wave. I know Jarvan's coming, so I'm going to be walking away from here. Um, let's go ahead and just... Actually, I'm going to call this wave. Just from right here. Um, no reason not to go ahead and get some damage off on Corky. We'll go back right here. Because this should... Yeah, not going to be missing a siege because I just killed it. Um, oh, never mind. She wants to stay. So I guess we'll stay. Still got 2,000 gold to spend. We do have a CS lead on Corky, but since he has a um, an assist, we should be actually pretty even on money, I think. But the fact remains that he has gone back while I haven't yet. So regardless of how you look... Whoops, I just misclicked. But regardless of how you look at it, he is technically ahead of me right now in a sense um, that sense being he's used his money but when I go back here and I spend my 2100 gold now we should be hmm. okay well he tried to flay me um, tried to make me his flay mignon but not going to be happening so Soraka and I just kind of stopping the waves from getting under us and let's see so we are going back now finally even though this is a siege wave, I don't know if I 100% agree with that. Um, well, that kind of sucks, because as soon as we try and go back, she made it on a siege wave instead of anything else. So actually, since it's a Soraka support, I can afford to get two mana potions instead of two health potions. So I'm going to get two mana potions instead, so I can spam my abilities more and let Soraka focus more on healing me up. Um, I think that'll benefit me a lot more and now I should have just fallen behind in CS to Corky because uh, we backed at a very not so great time sadly but it wasn't the worst thing that could have happened still wasn't the worst thing so I'm gonna come back here I bought a second Doran's Blade too just for um, that bit more early attack damage I could be having and Soraka's actually doing the right thing here if I was lacking AD as a support, you can just kind of or hit the uh, the range mains with one auto attack each, and then as the tower hits them, your AD should be totally fine to just get the last hits from there on his own. But let's see. So, as long as I don't get hooked, we should be good. So Soraka's wish coming out. Not sure what's going on. Good thing she's paying attention. And let's see here. All right, the heal coming out. I'm gonna drop my ward right there. That should give Nara a ward to be able to teleport to if he wants to. And that should also... 
um, then give us vision of Thresh if he ever tries to chill in this bush. So we should be pretty well off at the moment. My CS could stand to be a little higher. I got zoned very hard at the beginning. I'm going to actually... Oh, whoa, that was a spectacular hook. Jarvin coming in, though. I'm going to flash out here, use the calling off to the side, because I do see Shaco coming in. I'm not going to really bother getting too scared off of that. But, I mean, obviously, with all those people coming in, that was a pretty bad situation for me to be in. So, But that is okay. That is okay. Overall, that actually wasn't that bad for us. I am getting poked down right now, but with Soraka, I should be fine. No, um... No wars in there, so that's good for us. Corky is pretty low, and he only has health potions, so with him having no mana, um, we're in a really good position, actually. Like, a very convenient one. And I know it sounds kind of odd, but since I have pretty much full mana now, and Soraka to heal me, if I can just try to like take advantage of this little bit of goodness we got out of that, even though I use both of my summoners, and I don't think Corky used either of his. He may have used one? I'm not sure. I don't think he did. But let's go ahead and just walk up here and get some auto attacks off on it. And by some, I mean one. Because when you're like walking up to a tower with a Thresh right there, it's very risky, especially when you get um, <laughs> when you get to this point where people are actually decent at the game. Doing things like that is very risky. But it's looking like all those ganks that Arya keeps talking about from this Jarvan just went actually into her favor. So, great job by the Ari there turning that around. Let's go ahead and just get all these minions. And since they backed on a siege minion wave, we should be able to make them miss quite a few minions here. Um, and this should establish the CS lead again. And maybe at this rate we can take the turret as well. But, uh, do we want to? Yeah, we do want to. The faster we take this turret, the better off we'll be. So let's go ahead and just Q that, Q that one, and I actually did hit him with that Q, so that's good. And it's looking like, ooh, this Corky is going for a early um, Infinity Edge. Ooh, Jarvan and Lissandra are coming up behind us, kind of. They're at the Dragon right now, but they are kind of coming behind us. Me, and we do not want to be here whatsoever. So let's see. Ooh, Nar and Shago picking up kills up there over onto. Uh, What's his face? The ooh, Soraka barely missing that ward. Let's go ahead and just whoop. Oh, that will be. Ooh, maybe I shouldn't be killing that so fast. Maybe. All right, let's go ahead and just whoop. Oh, Ari picking it up. We got over there in time. Picked up the kill. Got the dragon, and whoop, got the scuttle crab. Even the ripped scuttler, if you will. And now I'm actually not even going to bother using my um. I'm not going to bother using my last mana potion because I know I'm going back right now. now. Let's see. Oh, fuck, man. I really don't want to miss those. So let's go ahead and grab this. And if I wait just a second for my mana, I'll be able to afford boots as well. So let's get these and then start charging out here again. With my E ranking up, um, I am... You know, it's, it costs less mana at this point, so I can kind of use it more to move. It looks like, uh, looks like Soraka's going up there to help. And this is where choi some choices come down kind of to playstyle, others don't. Since both of the people in the bot lane left and didn't get anything out of it, I should push. Uh, also because they left with, the, um, with my tower still up and the minions at my tower, which is kind of odd that they did that even, uh, I should push. With them mid, if they're not going to get anything out of it, I need to get this swinging back towards them because if they come stop me, Great, I can swing mid and help get that mid tower for Ari, but if they don't come stop me, then, well, you know, I just pushed a lot harder on those bot lane turrets. So either way, depending on how you manipulate the use of your pressure, you should be coming out kind of on top in a sense. But I should, wait, Thresh is top right now, and I am actually stronger than Corky right now. It sounds weird to say, because a lot of people think of Corky as this incredibly powerful burst champion, which he is. But when you're not going for Triforce on Corky, it kind of diminishes that bursty power that he has. Um, and it makes him more, you know, more of a kind of standard AD carry, if you will. But with all these people going back, and I know Corky kind of went back soon, or recently. So let's go ahead and just work on this. I know mid lane is gone. Lissandra is coming towards me as we speak. So I will back off. And that, as I was just saying, relieves pressure on the mid lane. 
bringing Corky back to bot and with Lissandra leaving, now they can get some free damage off here and I can make my way up to middle to try and help this because now Corky has to try and push from here as opposed to trying to push down here. And with me being able to go mid, um, the wave clear will be harder to, you know, safely do for what's her face. Oh, there's a pink right here. So let's go ahead and get this. Always just try and kind of look out for little pink wards. Let's go ahead and get that ward. Very well done. And sadly, Lissandra does have a lot of wave clear on her own. So it's kind of rough. Corky's pushing hard enough now that I need to go back there. Soraka should stay mid. Raka stay mid. Because we don't need this many people to come down just to stop a push. Literally the only reason I'm going down here is to stop Corky from pushing. And it is essentially an AD carry's job to stop that other AD carry from doing this. Um, where it's the support job or the support's job to kind of when when you're in this phase of the game, it's the support's job more to ward up for the AD carry, like on that bottom side of the map. So I can have any opportunity to actually somewhat safely farm in this bot lane and push it. Um, because essentially right now, AD carries, as you know, ju they just take farm and time to scale up and get to that that tremendous amount of power that they bring. But with Ariana Rampage, Thresh just died. Uh, I don't know where Corky is, but he's not here, so I'm just going to work on this tower. And since I can see a lot, like, you know, three people on the map essentially, because I know Thresh is dead and the other two I can see, I am very safe to be doing this right now. So let's go ahead and just get Q's off here. It looks like Corky does have his Infinity Edge, but I think I would win an outright duel against him, to be totally honest. So let's go ahead and just uh, maybe... Oh! Good lord. Alright, let's go ahead and drop the calling behind us here. Looking like he's going to flash after us. I'm just going to turn on him right there. Boop! Get the kill flash out. And let's see if I can get away from her. I should have my tower here. I'm going to drop the E just to get away. Her glacial path will probably be up kind of soon. And when it is, I'm going to be boned. Oh, it is not up. So, picking up that kill on Corky. He went really over-aggressive for me, and I think he was banking a lot on getting some crits off on me that did not happen. So, he ended up falling in that fight, which is a bit of a shame for him, but very, very good for us. And actually, I'm going to do this build this game, because I do... I haven't, tried, or I haven't done this one in a while, and I really do like it. There are two builds you can do on Lucian. One, you do usually when you're ahead. The other, you do when you're either going even or behind. I am doing the one that I would use if I were ahead in lane. Um, where I go, like I said earlier, for the Brutalizer, usually you get the Brutalizer after BF and Pickaxe, but I got the Brutalizer after my BF because I knew I could afford the Brutalizer and the Boots. So I thought it would be a better choice right there um, instead of the Pickaxe and the Boots. But that Brutalizer, obviously, with that early amount of armor pen that it gives you, very, very useful to burst in lane and be stronger than your lane mate. And then also... With um, with the CDR, it's very good. And then on top of that, you get Ionian Boots. I'm also running 5% CDR on my Masteries as opposed to 5% attack speed. So with just my items that I currently have, I have 30% CDR. And that is very good. So let's go ahead and just get some autos off on this turret. There's... Woo! Looking like... Oh, that's going to be a lot of damage going off on her. And she is just going to walk on out of that. Okay. Well, end of that right there. So, lots of damage going off on both sides here. But let's see, is he going for me? I don't know. Alright, that hook's not going to land. I think Shaco thought he was going for him. But as long as you just try and always juke yourself, regardless of how safe you may or may not be, always just keep a watchful eye is a fantastic idea. And since they're doing the dragon right now, I'm going to use my calling on this wave to help me very quickly push it. And I don't want to get close to Irelia right now because I know if I get close to her, she can jump on me really fast. And with her stun, because she has lower health than me, I will get decimated. And that's pretty disgusting. So, of course, give that to Ari. Maybe we can go ahead and just, you know, pick these up for a bit of money. And that'll die. Now we can get the dragon. So let's go ahead and just work on this Rift Scuttler a little bit. No, let's not. I think we should just get the dragon. Probably way more important to... Uh, keep up the dragons because when you get the first one it actually becomes more and more important to keep getting them 
Because the more dragons you get up to the fifth one, just the better off it can be. And as soon as you can establish that fifth dragon, if the game actually ends up going on that long, it is such a boost to everything. And in my opinion, it even comes close to rivaling the power of a Baron buff. So putting that into perspective, very good to have. So back off immediately. Try, I'm trying to run towards my team right now because I know if he goes chasing after me, I can probably live long enough to get to my team. Looking like they killed Lissandra there too, so great job. And let's go ahead and just dash over this and take these Krugs real fast. So or just take the big one because Corky's right around the corner. Not really wanting to risk anything. I can actually go back and get my full Infinity Edge. So I think I will be doing that along with getting my mana back. So let's pick this item up. And then next up I will be finishing my Yomus. And I never finished explaining the difference between the builds. I told you guys that this was the one you use if you're ahead. But the one you use if you're even or behind actually is um, Berserker Greaves. Don't get the Brutalizer and go straight from Infinity Edge into a Shiv. Because that makes it more... You know, less focus on that bursty amount of damage you can do and the total lane dominance that these items provide you with. And focuses more on just standard AD carry stuff. And both builds Lucian uses very, very well. They're just slightly different playstyles. Where this one typically works out better for me because it, you know, it allows for more aggression. But either way you go, you're not take you're not making a wrong choice unless you're trying to use this build when you're horribly behind then you probably won't even be able to outburst people with it, which is kind of the point of it, if you guys didn't pick up on that. And I'm actually going to cull this next wave too. As you guys have probably noticed, I haven't really been using my culling on champions. Um, and it's not because it's bad to do that. I only use it on waves a lot when I know I'm not going to need it for a bit, because it clears waves so efficiently. It shreds through them, and it helps apply a lot of pressure. And... Um, Pressure is, I keep using that word, and I want you guys to understand what it means. Pressure is when you are, you know, pushing. And when you apply pressure, as I was saying earlier, it draws members of the enemy team. And if you can draw people of the enemy team, you can, you can do t one of two things, either when you're ahead. One thing is always group up, stay as a clump, and force team fights, because if you're ahead... Um, unless you guys really mess something up, you should be winning. And that, you know, I'm sure that just makes sense. Um, the other thing you can do, which is the thing I like to do because it typically just works better in solo queue, is, um, you can take the route where you focus way more on pressure and objective control. Because if you can focus on objective control and pushing... Like, even though they just got three kills, I'm going to be getting this inhibitor, or this, uh, this second tier turret. So, I don't think I'm going to be paying for it with my life. Ooh, he hooked me with that one, but I don't think it's going to matter. Because, um, I know there are people coming. Let's go ahead and get out of the box. Okay, dropping the in there. They have a pink right here, and Ari's just going to pick up the kill, no problem. And I don't know... Whoa! Okay, teleport's coming in. I'm going to keep running past, and let's see. Drop the heal off right here, and I'm gonna flash before she can queue to me again so I saw the teleport coming in I assumed Ari saw it too so I just tried I tried to go in and help but there was only so much I could do I may may have been able to kill Corky right there but that was a little too iffy for me with Irelia right behind him um, so I decided just to take the safe route and not do that so we got the mid turret even though we lost some kills for it, but having this pressured uh, even harder, because now if we just push mid, we go straight to the inhibitor turret, which will force people to go straight to that. Um, meaning, if you guys don't know where I'm getting at with this, if we have anybody applying pressure to mid and making them go defend this tower, that makes this tower and this tower massively easier to take. Because... When people are so focused on mid, you know, obviously it gets a lot harder to, you know, get the rest right there. So Jarvin's sitting there trying to laugh at me. I'm just going to poke him with a piercing light. Looking like he was AFK for a bit. Um, so possibly raging? I don't know. Drop a warden there. See what's happening. Um, and since everyone's mid and Jarvin's weak as hell, I have 
no no fears with pushing this. And like I said, with them pressuring mid, they're going to be very forced to be defending it. So I can just walk in here, pop my Yomus, so I can get this as quickly as possible, take the turret, and see if we can keep pushing. Because at this point, there's nothing trying to stop me from pushing, so there's you know no reason to stop. And actually, now that there is, we should back off. You could see them backing off of the mid lane right there. So two or another tower done. As you guys can see, I am just farming and pushing. So even though my kill score isn't that great, I hope you guys are still learning a lot about how to more safely win games as opposed to just trying to be really strong. Um, because as you guys can see, I am getting very fed off of nothing but CSing right now. And that, on its own, is so good. And maybe I can get this red buff. Hopefully it's up. We should go top, though, now with uh, with Nars Tower pushing. And their red is not up. That's a shame. But I'm still going to go top for this guy. Help him push his tower down. Because since there's only Irelia here, she is going to be... Whoa! I do not want this. Let's go ahead and drop the Yomus and the Culling. Going to be doing a lot of damage to them here, but it looks like Nar may be getting caught out of this one. Oh, that was a really good flash hook. And I'm I'm dead. There's no way out of it. I'm very dead. That was a really good hook, actually. This Thresh is very good at hooking. But my team did do the very right thing there. Since they all responded with so many people to stop us from getting the stop turret, my team took that as a signal to go straight for the dragon. And they got it entirely uncontested. So two deaths for the dragon, like for the third dragon. It's actually not too bad because give it, you know, 12 minutes. If we get the next two dragons all, like right on time, we can actually just destroy them with the pure immense amount of pressure on its own. Because when you double the effects of every other dragon buff and then also give that huge dragon bleed of true damage, your sieging potential is insane along with uh, the bonus attack damage and AP, and just generally everything you get from it is so incredible. And if you can manage to secure a Baron along with a 5th Dragon, there's damn near no coming back from that, in all honesty. It's so difficult to try and make any sort of comeback at that point. We do have a lot of people coming in from behind us. Um, whoa, alright, it's looking like... Looking like nothing's happening here. Let's go ahead and just do some damage up on this guy. Drop the culling right here. Actually not going to be getting much out of it. Maybe I'm gonna... Shit, I don't have my flash! Oh, God. Oh, Lord. I thought my heal was my flash. So, that was honestly just a silly mistake. Be or more than anything else. So, ugh. That was stupid, but we got Shaco coming in. I really is trying to 1v3, and now she's trying to, well, 2v4, I guess. So, my stupid mistake cost me my life right there. And instead of trying to uh, keep being dumb now, I'm going to buy home guards and go straight back to what I was doing before. Because clearly, I'm going to be a lot better at that right now. Because um, I guess I don't have my head on straight or something. Because that was not, you know, a standard play I think I would try and make. That was really over aggressive for a rank game. But our CS is still decent right now. Uh not perfect by any means, but still pretty good. So let's just try and keep that aspect up and keep up this goodness. And this is also actually a strategy you can take on um for when you're feeding in your games. Like if you're not doing well you can still be very useful to your team just by drawing attention to yourself and uh, taking objectives which as you guys may know it only makes sense that I'm pretty good at that because I feed so often so with me doing this I think I can fight Corky I sh think I can it depends on who gets the luckier crits and plus if I dodge his abilities the real kickers are going to be um, the fact that he doesn't have a Sheen proc able to help him. Uh, so his missile spam won't be as detrimental to me. Ooh, that damage coming off on Lissandra right there. Looking like we're going to be popping the Yomus on this Shaco right here. All right, I'm coming in as well. Pop the Yomus, drop the ultimate, drop over here, and not going to pick up the kill on Corky. 
but still did scare the jeepers out of them. So with this wave coming up next, we may be good. So it's looking like that's going to be some damage off onto him. Might as well get some shots off on this tower while Nara's tanking it. So I really ultimate right there. Let's go ahead and just, um, whoa, that super amount of Nar, and boom, that's going to be a kill right there, picking it up, and let's see, oh shit, that tower is wrecking me, good lord, alright, so, I'm going to dip out for now, uh, the tower was shitting on me, tower, tower was shitting on me, what the hell are you doing, I had to get out, Holmes, I had to get out, he sat there getting hit. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't looking. But bit of a mistake. I was trying to get in there to try and help. I was diving with them. I don't think my team was totally paying attention to what I was doing. So that is a bit of a shame. Because now they're getting angry with me. Um because I was I was kind of right there with them, trying to help them. But that it's whatever. No reason to sit here and argue. That'll get nothing accomplished. So we'll just say whatever, move on with our day. I did not die, and that on its own is rather important, because not only for my KDA, of course, but, um, you know, for the amount of time that I can save just by not dying. Because when you save time, you're, uh, you're totally fine. And let's see, there is a lot of people put, or a lot of minions bottom. Nar is heading down there to get them, though, so I do not need to do that. And maybe, I could probably, I know I could get a lot of damage off on them, but I highly doubt a kill, and I saw him right there. So, you know, just kind of paying attention. It does have its benefits sometimes. And we just need to keep our eyes peeled, and always, I do recommend when you're playing Lucian, just kind of always be ready to hit your E, no matter what situation you're in. Because if people are trying to make plays, you'll find lots of, like, flash hooks or random things like that going down quite frequently. So the only risky thing with this is that we don't have any vi or, uh, vision on Baron, which I believe Soraka is going for right this second. Um, so if we all group up for this dragon and they go for the Baron, they can pretty safely get it where we'll just get a fourth dragon out of it, which actually is a pretty good trade, all things considered. So let's go ahead and just jump on this guy, do a bunch of damage there, pick up the kill, and get the dragon. So with the jungler dead, no chance of us getting it stolen with uh, with nothing else there. So Corky is top, and with that fourth dragon, we can... Oh, wait. Wait, yeah. Yeah. I just saw Aurelia bottom, too. Why didn't I think of that? We can probably get Baron pretty safely. Um, go ahead and... What the fuck? Okay, well, I guess I'm just going to kill that scuttle crab in one shot. Um, but let's go ahead and just make sure we are using our abilities to help kill it faster. And, wow, this is actually a pretty quick Baron. So, Lissandra actually getting quite a lot off there. And let's see, there's the Irelia teleport coming in. She is going on the wrong Shaco, even. So that was <laughs> such a worthless teleport from her. But, wait! Maybe our Irelia's coming back in. We gotta try and keep our own shit going. There's a bunch of damage going off on Corky right there with that... Yomu's culling and let's go ahead and go straight for this because we do have minions right here and this tower is so free with the Baron buff and everything that's going on so pick up the tower go for uh, go for the inhibitor I guess since no one's trying to stop us and that will be the end of this inhibitor so very well done I'm gonna go straight to bottom now see if I can get this huge wave and see if I can um, pick up a bit more money for myself along with getting you know my next item because if I can get my next item that'll be really good for me I hope I really hope she doesn't just like jack all of this okay like she just did so that you know, that's a bit of a shame um well now I can't get my item jerk okay well I guess I'll get this next wave um maybe I can group and push by yep so, sadly, if I were able to get that whole wave, I would have had enough money for my shiv. Um, whoa, okay, going to have to get out of here, and, oh, oh, God, all right, there was the, uh, you know, lots of shit going off there, that flay trying to get me? Will it happen? The hook coming out, uh-oh, I need to, shit, okay. 
don't know why she didn't follow up on that uh, that glacial path, but thank goodness she didn't. Wait, what the heck? When was Nar there? Okay. Well, either way, if I had known Nar was there, I still don't think I would have wanted to go in. But um, right here, there's actually, you know, it, it's like I was saying earlier, another very good time to make sure that I don't fucking die. Um, because if I die with the Baron buff, I lose that amount of insane pressure that it provides me with uh, with the minion buff that Baron gives to or the minions now. So actually, our red's up in 10 seconds. I am going to take it and get that. So they do want to group top now. So that's totally fine, I guess. But I'm still going to sit here, take this red, and then I'll have, or make my way up top. Let's go ahead and grab this. And with the shiv now, on top of really increasing my attack speed a lot and giving me more crit chance for my Infinity Edge and my Yomus, um, just, you know, a very good item. Uh, overall for Lucian because with all the dashing and the double attacks you do actually it makes your lightning from the shiv pop up way more frequently so overall very useful item I do recommend on Lucian um, I mean you can get Phantom Dancer that's not saying Phantom Dancer is bad on Lucian but in my honest opinion I do find static shiv to be the better choice so let's go ahead and knock a hit by that and I guess I'll just run in here, get some hits off on this turret, and it's looking like no reason for me to stop that. So, that turret's going down, looking like, oh, that hook is going to come out. Let's go ahead and drop the colon. I'm going to dash out of this lady. There is her Zonia. She's going to alt herself? Not alt herself right there. And let's go ahead and see. Maybe we can get some damage off right here. There's two kills for the Lucian coming out double kill right there and it's looking like we are the only person with a lot of HP still let's go ahead and drop the heal BAM gonna be another shutdown right there just getting in Shaco's tanking the turret oh I'm tanking the turret now do not want that but let's see so the hook coming out right there let's go ahead and see if we can just get some good damage off on him but we can end it right here because of all these super minions coming into the base and the fact that we just slayed all of them except for Thresh so maybe boop Pick up another kill for me for KDA. Picking up the A's. Going to get this Nexus turret kill now. And even though I wasn't truly useful throughout that whole game, um, along with What's-Her-Face doing a great job and my pressure around the map, um, we were able to secure a very, rather easy win, if you will. But if you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully learned something, make sure you like it if you're me out. If you want to, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Twitter, or my second channel. I'll follow links in the description below. And as always, I love you guys. It'll be a wonderful day. Peace!